All right, curiosity finally got the better of me. So rather than try this out in advance, which uh, I fully admit is probably something that I should do and probably what most would, I'm going to just say that for the past week or two, I've been walking around and playing around with this in my head. Uh, this idea here for a little variation on Doc Hockey. I've hinted at it a couple of times as well over in Delphi that I kind of thought of maybe a different way to play it. And I want to try it out. And up front and short, what it is is... Um, in a sense, it's going to kind of make Doc a little bit more like Shootout or Mike Owens Quick Play Pro Hockey. And so for that effect, I'm actually going to, uh, while I'm thinking of it here, I'm going to add the uh, Quick Play Pro Hockey clock there, Mike Owens Quick Play Pro Hockey, which any hockey game where I'm counting the minutes, I uh, tend to use that. So uh, basically how it works, and of course I don't have my puck marker ready actually. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. I'll try to waste a little less time here. Uh, so the idea here is uh, similar to how shootout hockey works with uh, where you have cards where you can flip zero, one, two, three, or four minutes. And uh, Mike Owens quick play pro hockey where when you roll the dice, they equate to either zero, one, two, or three minutes. Uh, maybe a little more similar to the latter. I, I've thought, uh, and I'm going to do a couple of variations on doc hockey with this uh, experiment. Uh, the first of, of which being that uh, I'm going to um, count minutes with uh, the cards because uh, one thing about dog hockey that makes it a little different from Mike Owens quick play pro hockey and shootout hockey is that you know exactly how long a period is going to be. I mean, you can you can vary it. You can play with nine or ten sequences if you want a little more scoring or something like that. But in general, you know when uh, a period will end. And so one thing, I mean, I like the game so much, I have a really hard time finding fault with any of it. But one thing that I will say is, like, say if it's uh, in the third period and a team is down by three goals and uh, you only have one or two sequences left to play, then you know that there's no possibility of that team coming back. And I realize this is kind of true of other hockey games too. And it's most likely true as well in Mike Owens' uh, Quick Play Pro Hockey or Shootout Hockey. But uh, with those games, I mean, with Mike's, for instance, there's a possibility that you keep rolling a one and not advancing any time. And for Shootout, I mean, it's highly unlikely but remotely possible that you could have a few zero-minute cards come up in succession when it is time to, to move time. So, so here, pretty self-explanatory. I think for Diamonds, I'm going to advance zero minutes. And uh, I put four there in parenthesis because you, can, you could probably... Um, if you wanted to, you could uh, advance at four minutes. I was thinking between zero and four. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really look like a zero, but uh, that's how I'm going to use the diamond as zero if I can remember to. I mean, a diamond like a square does have four sides, so you could, or four corners. So you could say that maybe it's four minutes if you wanted to go one, two, three, and four minutes instead of zero, one, two, and three. And, uh, and then for spades as well, because if I can grab a spade here, of course, now that I'm looking for one, I won't find one. Uh, because, you know, they have, the, it's the leaf and, or, you know, the leaf shape kind of, and it has the one point. And so I thought for a spade, I, I would move one minute, advance one minute for a spade. And for a heart, because, I mean, you have, you know, the, the uh, out of the, the two bumps, I guess. Uh, so it's gonna, going to advance two minutes. And then for a club, you have uh, this uh, three leaf clover. So I'm going to advance three minutes for clubs. So that's what I worked out uh, just out walking uh, one day. And uh, and I realized too, I'm fully aware that this could throw off uh, the ratings, the player ratings and things like that. And uh, so it could, it could be that actually the kind of score that we get here is just not, you know, realistic at all. The play is not realistic at all. But that's just one of two things that I'm going to try. And this is one I've not actually tried advancing time like this yet. The other one that I want to try is something that I have um, off camera, have experimented with before. And that is uh, just um, going through the deck. And should the puck change hands? Uh, normally in a game of Doc, let's say that it changes hands on the second card of the sequence. Then you're just going to burn two cards. I've tried playing it a couple of times off camera where I'm not burning any cards. Once the result, a couple of times actually, the results were pretty in line with what you might get anyway for a period. And then once they were a little wonky. But I'm going to try an additional variation on that variation, which is variable time i guess in short that's another thing that makes stock or one thing i guess the main thing that makes stock different well there are other things but one thing that makes stock different from again shootout mike owens quick play pro hockey is that uh it's static time i guess it isn't variable time it's static time so anyway i might actually zoom out a little bit here so i can uh, so the cards are in view here so 
So the way that this will work, and I should probably do a little shuffle before hand, just double check now because I kind of picked them apart and put them back together. want to get a good uh, representative uh, period of play here. So, uh, so what are we here? Game starts at about 5.15. Okay. So to kick things off here, we're going to uh, actually have zero minutes. So something could happen right here in the opening minute of play, let's say. And with the puck, it's going to be because I have Chicago here on the road in Montreal at home. It was convenient. This is an excuse to use the 66-67 doc set, the first uh, teams that I ever got for the game, do a deck of cards hockey, and have not used these particular cards or teams in a while. So anyway, it's going to be Pierre Pallad here with possession. And uh, Pallad with the five, so Pallad is going to be able to play it through here in the opening minute. He gets it to 10 to Dennis Hall, and Dennis Hall has scored a goal, so I can't even really demonstrate what's going on. So for something like that, I guess from 0 to 60, and I've shown different ways you can do that as well. I could take, for instance, uh, uh, a, a D6 minus 1. This is how I do it most commonly. A D6 minus 1, and then D D10. So I could say there are 59 seconds. That feels appropriate. Uh, Dennis Hall has scored here and made it one nothing for Chicago. Dennis Hall from Pierre Pallad. If I want the secondary assist, uh, the secondary assist is going to uh, the 9 of Diamonds, which is going to be Pat Stapleton. So it is, uh, again, it's a De uh, Dennis Hall, from Pierre Pallot and Pat Stapleton here, just 59 seconds in. Try to keep track of the game while I'm doing this as well. So we're going to advance three more minutes uh, after that. Uh, so one nothing here, Chicago, in three more minutes. And it's going to go back to Chicago Blackhawks again. Once again, it's Pierre Pallot. Not saying these are the best to shuffle. Pallot's going to... Um, be able to play it to uh, seven, Bobby Hall. And Bobby Hall has made it 2 nothing for Chicago here. And uh, just typical of this channel, Montreal having it handed to them here. So 2 nothing here, just three minutes in, in the early going. That was Bobby Hall, Pallot picking up another assist. And if we're looking for a secondary with the hearts, so it's going to be Hall from Pallot and Makita. Sounds fitting to me. So 2 nothing here for Chicago. And uh, let's still, let's, uh, let's keep going with it. So we're going to take three more off the clock now. We're up to minute six. And uh, with the eight again, it is the Blackhawks with possession. This time, Chico Mackey doing the honors, where the Montreal team defense will be able to take it away. So this is the other variation. Montreal has the puck. And so the way that this is going to work is when it arrives at 20 minutes, the period's over. It doesn't matter. Again, much like a shootout deck, it doesn't really matter how much of the deck that I've gone through. Obviously, with more goals, I will burn more cards. And with fewer goals, fewer cards. So anyway, I've considered now that the puck has changed hands. And... And as I say that, I'm wondering now if this says so. Uh, we're going to take two more minutes off the clock now. We're going to see who has the puck this time. Watch it be Chicago again. Indeed, it is, as predicted. Stan Makita this time with it. And Makita, Montreal team defensive A. Unfortunately, they do permit on a Red King. So Stan Makita, and he feeds it in the slot to Bobby Hall. And Bobby Hall with the three. And we have a 3-0 three, uh, three game here for Chicago. Just eight minutes into this one, the 66-67 formidable Chicago Blackhawks. Hall from Makita, they're each picking up another point. And, because uh, it was Hall, right? The ace, yep. And uh, the four of spades, that's going to be Phil Esposito there picking up the uh, secondary helper. So 3 nothing Chicago here eight minutes in, where we're going to take two more off the clock now. We're up to minute 10. And uh, another possession for Chicago. So Phil Esposito, Esposito with the blackjack, though. It's going to change hands. We're going to take another three minutes off the clock now. Finally, Montreal with a touch. Terry Harper. Terry Harper here. And, of course, he's unable to do anything with it. So i got to remember now, um, I won't advance any time because that's a six of diamonds. So uh, eight, once again, it's the Chicago Blackhawks and Chico Mackey. Chico Mackey with the Joker, which is bad for the visitor. So we're going to take three more minutes off the clock. We're up to minute 16. And uh, the Joker for Montreal, so Montreal choice. Let's give it to Bobby Rousseau. Bobby Rousseau, of course, with the three, he shanks it. So uh, we're going to take another minute here off the clock, up to minute 17. And with the Queen, it's uh, Ralph Backstrom there for the Canadians. Backstrom, he feeds it through the goal mouth to a team player. Let's draw another card here, usually with these so the six team players. I'm going to say Jimmy Roberts then. So it's uh, Backstrom to Jimmy Roberts, and Jimmy Roberts with the five, the team unable to score there. So three to go in the period. And that's going to bring us right to the final minute, but I will see what's happening up to and including the final minute. Five, that's going to be a Blackhawks possession, Eric Nesterenko. Eric Nesterenko with the queen, that's going to be broken up by the Montreal defense. I'm going to do it the way I do with shootout. That's not a zero minute card. I play, you know, I have my own ways. Basically any hockey game that I've played long enough, I have my own. 
Uh, I developed my own ways of playing it. So anyway, it's 3-0 here for Chicago after period one. And something else I'm curious about, and I'll find it out more quickly if I count the cards left over. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So use uh, 43 cards in that period. 43 cards. And so, I mean, you know, a typical period of Doc Hockey would be 32 cards, but that's, you're not, in that case, you're not permitting any secondary assist or any team players or anything like that. So uh, that it feels kind of about realistic that it would be, um, that, yeah, the f 43 cards there, I said. So 43 cards, it's 3 nothing for uh, Chicago after one. I'll be back after a shuffle. All right, back for another period, and uh, I, I'd say if Chicago wins this by by a long shot, by you know a country mile here or whatever, then uh, then this is obviously a ludicrous uh, setup. Um, of course, I'm just kidding about that. The Blackhawks had an excellent team, and 66-67. And never mind a dice fumble. I'm not sure when was the last time I've done that. That's a card fumble, but that was a two of clubs. So we're going to take three minutes off the clock here to start the second period. And with a jack of clubs, uh, the puck is going to. Uh, Doug Moans here for the Chicago Blackhawks. And with a seven, Moans going to be able to play it too. Number nine. Number nine is going to be Phil Esposito. And Phil Esposito with the ace right off the bat. Phil Esposito from Doug Moans. And a Boston Bruin to be in a former Boston Bruin. Making it 4 nothing Chicago just three minutes in. Secondary assist, the five of clubs. Moans can't assist twice. So uh, we're going to take, uh, we're going to stay in the same minute now. And notice here as well, I'm not flipping the card for home visitor. I'm just looking for uh, looking for a player uh, that it would go to. So uh, this is going to be six. That's going to be uh, Ken Hodge. That was something else I don't think I explained, but sorry. Uh, it's, yeah, Hodge is not going to be able to do anything with it. So we're going to take three more minutes off the clock now. We're up to minute six. And with a jack, that's going to be Jean Beliveau. Jean Beliveau here. And, of course, he's not able to do anything with it because I just can't have nice things here as a Habs fan. So another minute off the clock, and it's going to be Phil Esposito here looking to pick up another point. The Montreal uh, team defense is going to break up that. And uh, I'm not sure what to do with the Joker for advancing time. And to be honest, quite honest, I never really thought of that. So I did say this is new. This is experimental. Uh, I'm just not going to advance time. Let's see who has possession. Once again, Chicago, of course. Bobby Hall this time. But the Joker is going to take the puck away from Bobby Hall as well. Let's take another minute off the clock here without breaking up of that play. Five of diamonds. It's going to be Ted Harris this time. And, of course, Harris unable to do anything with it. We're going to stay in the same minute, though. Slow-moving second period. Where's Stan Mikita? Mikita here with the queen. Double-checking team defense A. So nothing happening there. We still stay in the same minute. So, uh... This time, too, it's going to be a Chicago team player, the ace. I'm just going to give the puck to Pierre Pilat. And Pilat with the king, that will penetrate the Montreal defense. So Pilat getting a two-player seven. Again, that's Bobby Hall. And Bobby Hall has made this an embarrassing 5 nothing route already for Chicago. Not even quite halfway through it. So we have Bobby Hall from Pierre Pilat and Stan Makita. So each of them have a few points now. I don't know what this uh, is trying to tell me. Anyway, so uh, King uh, now, so it's going to be another a minute here off the clock where Montreal has possession, Jacques Le Perrier with it, and of course Le Perrier, nothing doing there, and we're going to stay in the same minute where we get a 10, a 10, Kem Warm this time with the puck, Warm feeds it through, Warm gets it to Dennis Hall, and Dennis Hall, let me double check here, Charlie Hodge with the B, only on a King, so Dennis Hall has made this a 6 nothing Chicago game, did I say Kem Warm there the first time? I think I did, I can go back and check, yeah, sequence of 10s there, not the most. Uh, the best shuffled, I guess. So Kem Warm here has made it a 6 0 uh, game here for Chicago. Let's take another couple of minutes off the clock now. We're up to minute 11. And it's a Montreal team player. Let's give the puck to JC Tremblay. Tremblay here with an 8. That's going to work for a Montreal team uh, play. That's going to go to Ralph Backstrom. And Backstrom unable to get on the board. So we're going to take <laughs> get so many zero minute cards, actually. So if the diamond was four, maybe that'd be better. But it's going to be Bobby Russo with possession. Of course, Russo misplays it. And we're going to take two more minutes off the clock here up to minute 13. Think I'm going to run out of cards here in the second period. Eric Nestorenko with the puck. Nestorenko can't do anything with it. We're going to take another minute off the clock here up to minute 14. Minute 14 here in the King. That's going to be Henri Richard with it. And Richard with a 10. So Richard... Uh, and unfortunately, I'm gonna have to. Sh I'm gonna do a bit of a live shuffle here. So, uh, wasn't anticipating this. I guess I, end up, I used 43 cards in the uh, first period. I've used 54 so far here, and courtesy of those zero minutes passed, actually. But I don't know. It's a little more dynamic and interesting. I'm not keeping track of stats here. It's been very good games uh, for Chicago for the likes of Bobby Hall, Stan Makita, Phil Esposito, Pierre Pilat, 
and uh, Dennis Hall as well. I think he's potted a couple. So, okay. Anyway, hopefully I've shuffled these reasonably well enough. Let's uh, let's take them back to the table here now. So Henri Richard had the puck, and uh, he scores. We're going to allow that. So it's uh, he snaps. Uh, Dennis DeJordi shut out here. We have a 6-1 game. We'll flip for the secondary assist. So didn't Russo have it initially? I can't remember. No, GC Trombley. I think it was Trombley to uh, Henri Richard, I think. It doesn't really matter. And uh, and uh, uh, um, and Russo getting the secondary assist there. Anyway, so three more off the clock. Now we're up to minute 17 where Chicago has the puck because, of course, they do. Chico Mackey can't do anything with it, but we stay in the same minute because that's just how this game's been going. Bobby Russo, Russo with the ace. He's able to, to uh, maneuver it too. Bobby Russo, individual effort here for Bobby Russo. And it's Chicago 6, Bobby Russo 2, except I think Andre Richard did score the other goal for Montreal. So we got a 6-2 verdict here late in the second period. And a once again, zero minutes. Wow, that's happening a lot. And I didn't actually, we'll say secondary assist for this card then, sorry. Uh, Claude LaRose there with a backup with a second assist. And of course, we're still not advancing any time anyway. All the diamonds appear to be together. Uh, so, whoops, I did say we aren't advancing any time. So John Ferguson here with it with the 8. Ferguson, he plays it through to the jack. Bobby Rousseau. And look at this, Montreal trying to get some get back here late in period two. And uh, so we have a 6-3 uh, verdict here. And, uh, of course, we get a diamond. <laughs> Ten. That's going to be Ken Warm with it here in this goal fest, amid this goal fest. And Team Defense A only in a red king. So two more off the clock now. We're up to minute 19 here. We're about 70 carats into this one. I'll fully admit this is not, this part anyway, is not the greatest endorsement. Richard being at home, that's an automatic play through to seven. Seven. Jean Beliveau with it in the Joker. That's going to be an automatic goal. So hold on to your hat at the uh, Forum. And uh, don't loosen up your suit and head off just yet. The uh, the Blue Blanc et Rouge, they are coming back here late in the second period. And uh, secondary assist, I guess. I'm scared I'm going to get a diamond next, though. So that goes to John Ferguson there. And, of course, lo and behold, there's the diamond. So three, Cormway. I shouldn't complain as a Habs fan. Let's give them a chance to come back here. Cormway gets it to nine. Ralph Baxham. Baxham with the nine. Look at this. Whether it's realistic or not, it's fun. So Chicago is up 6 nothing, And where you saw 0, you now see 5. And we're still in the second period of this All-Star game of sorts. Now that goes beyond the 20-minute mark. So I'm going to say period over for that. Let me see here if I count the remaining. So we got, what, 4, 6, 8, 9, 12, 15, 21, 23. So uh, 85 cards. <laughs> That's that's a lot even for a there aren't many shootout periods. Like, I think I have had a couple that have gone about that long, but it takes a lot of goals and penalties and penalties and goals uh, to get there. So anyway, uh, let's uh, again we'll try to shuffle these reasonably well enough. So there, I think that there is something to be said then for burning the cards in the sequence that you don't have some of the same cards coming up again and again. It really does. And this is similar with shootout. It really does matter where in the sequence the card appears. But again, I just wanted to try something new. And who knows, maybe after two very high scoring periods, we're going to get a period of play that is, uh, you know, lackluster. That's what happened actually when I was just trying the other variant, the untimed one. I had like a 1-1 period and a 4-3 period and a you know, a couple of things uh, going on there. So, like that. Anyway, so what are we now? 18 into it. Okay, so watch this be a diamond. Didn't I call that? Uh, so, it's going to be Chicago with possession because, of course. But, no, Dennis Hall, that's broken up. So, three off the clock here to kick things off proper. Cam Warren feels like he's had a lot of touches, but that'll be the end of his. Another minute coming off. Montreal 10, J.C. Tremblay 8. Plays it through. Tremblay to the jack. That's Bobby Rousseau. And Bobby Rousseau has managed to tie this hockey game, scoring only in a king. Bobby Rousseau from, who did I say, John Ferguson? J.C. Tremblay. Uh, yeah, J.C. Tremblay. And, uh, and uh, then the ace of uh, club is going to be Jean Beliveau. So we got a six-all game now. And, of course, it's a zero minute because that's just my luck. Ace, Bobby Rousseau. No, Rousseau's not able to do anything with it. Two more coming off the clock. Now up to minute six with the nine. That's going to be Pat Stapleton here, and he maneuvers it through to uh, six is uh, Ken Hodge. Ken Hodge unsuccessful. Three more coming off the clock. Now we're up to minute nine with the eight. Uh, Jacques Le Perrier with possession. Now Le Perrier with a jack. That's going to be broken up by the Chicago D. 
And as we won't advance any time, we're the four. We're going to give the puck to Doug Jarrett. And Jarrett there with the king. Uh, that, oh, no, only in a red king. So uh, we advance a couple more minutes here now. Uh, neither team with possession, but Montreal now possession goes the Canadians' way. Ted Harris, team defense piece. So Ted Harris, he gets it to John Ferguson. John Ferguson with a five. Uh, of course, we're going to stay in the same minute. And a 10, that's going to be Ken Warm here with it. No, Ken Warm unable to do anything with it, though. A couple more off the clock now. Where are the Black Ace? That's going to be Stan Makita. Stan Makita, though, again, the Montreal defense breaking anything and everything up here. So up to 15 now with the two, a Montreal team player in the Ace. That's going to be J.C. Tremblay. Tremblay here with a three. No, nothing doing there. So three more off the clock now. Two minutes left in the hockey game. Haven't really thought as far ahead as like pulling goalies or anything like that, what I would do here. Uh, Chicago with the five. That's going to be Nestorenko with another touch, unable to do anything with it. So again, kind of like an actual game of dock hockey. You get some pretty action-filled periods and then some, now that I've said that, it's going to be all diamonds and goals from here on in. So I did say Nestorenko unsuccessful, so I think I do have to advance another minute there. I should pay attention. Uh, seven there. That's going to be Bobby Hall with it once more here. And the Joker, that's bad for home. And then three, so I guess shootout, I would do one final one in the third period. Maybe I feel less inclined to do that with Doc, but what the heck? I mean, again, this doesn't count for anything anyway. This is not part of a project play. Consider this a one-off. Phil Esposito, consider Phil Esposito having fed it through to three, Bill Hay. And of course, Bill Hay gets the goal because, again, I just can't have nice things as a Habs fan. So there you go, 6 nothing Chicago. Montreal made it 7-6, and this is not a zero-minute card. It wouldn't, yeah. Um, that's normally how I played it at the end. I guess I would use that. Neither is a zero minute card, but I guess I would use that. Look at the nine of hearts and award another point to Cam Warham as if he didn't have enough already. So as you can see there, um, so 13 goals were scored in that game. That's a bit of an anomaly, a bit of an unusual game. But in the third period, we didn't have one goal until like technically even kind of you, one might say after the 20th minute, one could even argue that I bent the rules there. So it is possible, and hopefully, what I would hope is that you would get some periods with a little bit of in-between where it, where you're not going to. And so I think what I will do, I'm going to reset the score here and just uh, just go through it once more just to see, uh, you know, just to see what, if anything, will happen here that, you know, if it's going to be the same, if it's going to be different. So just kind of wanted to take this out of my head and I guess just kind of um, articulate my my thought process uh, allowed here, my reasoning uh, behind things as uh, as I go with it. So again, been, been playing this in my head now for a little bit for the past week or two. So, okay, we're actually going to advance time here with the first one. Uh, I, I'm not going to play a full game this time, I don't think. We'll go to a Doug Moans here. Doug Moans and Montreal Defense gets that. So we're going to stay in the same minute, though. Where the three, it's going to be Dennis Hall. Dennis Hall unable to do anything with it. Three more coming off the clock now. Up to minute four with a ten. That's going to be Cam Warm. Cam Warm as well, unsuccessful. Three more off the clock now. We're up to minute seven. And with the seven, it's going to be Montreal. Gilles Tremblay, Tremblay, he plays it through to a Montreal team player. That Montreal team player, let's go with Dick Duff. Dick Duff with it in the Joker. That's an automatic goal here. Seven minutes in for the Montreal Canadiens starting things off right this time. Duff from, um, I said, uh, who had possession? I believe it was, um, yeah, Gilles Tremblay. That's right, Duff from Tremblay. And uh, four of clubs corresponds to Jean Beliveau. So Duff, Trombley, and Beliveau, there's your line, there's your goal. And three more coming off the clock. Now we're up to minute 10 where we get a six here. So Montreal possession again, Claude LaRose. Claude LaRose unable to do anything with it. We'll stay in the same minute though. Six for Chicago, that's Ken Hodge. And Ken Hodge with a five. And we're going to take two more off the clock now, off the minute 12. And it's going to be King Pierre Pilat. He was dangerous. He was deadly last game. And he plays it through. Pilat gets it to Phil Esposito. And Phil Esposito has tied the game here. 12 minutes in, we have a one-all game. And uh, let's see here. Take another minute off the clock. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. The, uh, the queen. Uh, so Esposito from, who did I say it was from? My goodness, my short-term memory. Uh, ay, ay, ay. So that's going to be, uh, whoops. It's going to be, uh, oh, um... Palat, that's right, I knew that. Uh, so the spades there, no, there's no secondary assist. So watch this be a diamond, yep. <laughs> okay, 10, so it's going to be Ken Warm here, the puck again. 
And Warren with the ace is through, but the Joker, that's going to be taken away automatically. So finally, we advance some more time up to minute 15 now, where we get a three. That's going to be Yvonne Cornway, but unable to maneuver it to anyone. Two more coming off the clock now, up to 17 with the seven. That's going to be Jill Trombley with it again. With the nine there, Jill Trombley gets it through to eight. Eight, Trombley through to Trombley, of course, but no, nothing doing there. Good save by Dennis DeJordi. And two more coming off the clock now. A minute to go here in the first period, where the queen, Ralph, or Ralph Ralph Backstrom with the puck. Who else? Who, uh, whose else name was I trying to say there? Anyway, Backstrom with the five, so nothing doing there. And we take another minute off the clock now. Final minute of the first period where Pierre Pilat is going to make sure that Chicago goes into intermission now ahead with the lead. Pilat maneuvers it to Chico Mackey. Chico Mackey with the nine. So it is 2 1 Chicago here with a minute to go here late in the first period. And uh, so that, yeah, 19 plus, or that's not a zero minute. So that would advance to 22. So I'm calling that intermission. So a bit more of a standard period there, right? I had like five or six goals scored in a period, and then five or six scored in a period, and then a 20 minute period with nothing. And then this period here where it was a 2 1. One thing I didn't do there, though, I know that I didn't go through the full deck that one time, but I didn't count. I want to say there was between 30 and 40, maybe between 30 and 45 cards gone through there in the period, where I think probably an average period of Doc, you can correct me if I'm wrong, if you've counted a little more frequently than I have, but probably 40 cards thereabouts. Again, if you flip for secondary assist and uh, so on, and then also for team players as well, should the two come up uh, in the right part of the uh, right parts of the sequence, right? It could even come up twice within a sequence. Anyway. Uh, I'm going to just keep on going with this one here. So uh, two more minutes coming off the clock here now. And uh, that's going to be Chicago here with it. Pat Stapleton. Stapleton unsuccessful with anything here. Not much of anything up to minute five. And the Joker. Let's give that to Bobby Russo in Montreal. Russo plays it through Montreal. Joker home ice advantage. Leon Rushford can't do anything with it though. And uh, so it's going to be taken away here up to minute seven. Minute seven and four. Doug Jarrett. Jarrett, uh, that does only in a Red King. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So I have to rescind that now. It's going to be taken away here to warm minutes. Two more minutes coming off the clock now to five. Five is Eric Nestorenko again. Unable to do anything with it here. So three more off the clock now. We're up to minute 12. And we have a seven here. It's going to be Bobby Hall. Bobby Hall also has it taken away. So we stay in the same minute, however. Uh, with the nine, that's going to be a Jean Ferguson there from Montreal. But the six, Unable to do anything with it with the six. We stay in the same minute. Though. A lot of whistles, a lot of play stoppages in this minute. Phil Esposito puts it through. Esposito on for Esposito again. And Esposito just terrorizing Montreal in Montreal. Just tenderizing them. Anyway, uh, Esposito will get the secondary assist there provided by Pierre Pallant because, of course, and two more coming off the clock here now after minute 14, one goal period so far. King Pierre Pilat trying to do something about that. Another king. Part of the problem here just could be that these aren't the most well shuffled. And of course, Bobby Hall, that's basically an invitation for a goal. So Chicago's now potted a pair here, planted a couple here somewhat late in the second where three more minutes come off the clock. That goes to Bobby Russo. Bobby Russo, the four, just barely what he needs. On to the jack. The jack is again Bobby Russo. Individual effort. Dennis DeJordi, big save though. Hopefully I didn't call a goal on DeJordi where it was a black uh, king. And not a red king. Anyway, again, that's just playing around. Uh, where we're going to stay in the same minute, of course. And then Chicago with the puck, predictably. Dennis Hall, nope. So, uh, whoops. Don't know if I took the right card there or not. The one I was supposed to take. I guess it would have been another zero minute. Instead, the puck goes to J.C. Trombley. But Trombley, that's going to be taken away by the Chicago defense. And the final minute here, the second frame, where it goes to the Queen. Queen, Ralph Baxter with a five. If this is not a zero minute, oh, it is a zero minute. Okay, let's keep going. Where Chicago can put more offense and put more goals on the board here. So Stan Makita through to Chicago team player. Chicago team player. Let's give it to Doug Jarrett. And Doug Jarrett with the 10. And so Chicago here, they've broken away with three unanswered here in the second period. They make this a 5-1 verdict, and that's not a zero minute. So here after two periods of two games, the uh, Chicago Blackhawks, the stellar Chicago Blackhawks, uh, have uh, a 5-1 lead here on Montreal. But Montreal, there was that one period where they scored five unanswered goals. So let's hope for a little more of that here. If, uh, if you're a Habs fan here, headed into uh, period three. In the third period. So, let's see here. Okay. So, I mean, you know, it was 2-1, and until late in the second period there, there was uh, 
you know, it seemed like a pretty standard hockey game. Chicago, Chicago kind of got away with it. So two into the third period, ace, that's Bobby Rousseau. But Rousseau with the three, can't do anything with that. Two more off the clock now. We got a three, that's Cormway. Cormway with the ace, he maneuvers it to John Ferguson. Ferguson with the joker, it's a goal automatically. So could we have in the third here what we had in the second there? in the prior game. Uh, Ferguson, I want to advance three minutes, but now I'm going to say John Beliveau with yet another secondary assist. We're going to get three minutes off the clock anyway. And the seven, Montreal maintains possession, Jill Tremblay, and the team defense, that's going to work against them. So Tremblay, he gets it to Tremblay. Individual effort's been kind of a theme here, but Tremblay, he misses the net. So another minute coming off the clock here now, eight. It's going to be the ace, Bobby Rousseau. He's been prominent in this one. Rousseau, he's going to play it on to Henri Richard. And Richard, he fans on the shot. So two more coming off the clock now up to minute 10. Where uh, the 8th, that's going to be La Perriere. La Perriere with the 9. He'll be able to play it through. 2-4, on to 4. Dave Ballone. And with a 6, he doesn't score. So uh, we stay in the same minute, though, with the Queen now. Esposito back the other way immediately. Esposito puts it through Chicago, putting pressure on Esposito in all alone. And Esposito collecting the garbage and depositing it for a 6-2 lead here. Esposito and uh, assisting on that one. Let's give that to a Pierre Palat because, of course. And then two more off the clock now. We're up to minute 12 here with a 4. Terry Harper, he's not been able to do anything all game with any touch that he's had, it's felt like. Or all, all mini series this has now turned into. Um, so a minute there and a 6. That's going to be Claude LaRose. He has better luck. LaRose on uh, for uh, Gilles Tremblay, and Gilles Tremblay has managed to cut Chicago's lead in half, I guess. And uh, so we have a 6-3 game now. Here's seven minutes to go, and uh, three more coming off the clock, unless I want to count that as a secondary assist. Sure, why not? Uh, so Jacques Le Perrier picking up a secondary helper here. We take another minute off the clock, and of course we give it to Chicago to the team player. Let's say Boyer there for Chicago. Joker, it's taken away. Anyway, three more off the clock now, three to go here in the third. And that's a lot of three. Terry Harper, has he finally made hay with it? No, he hasn't. So three more off the clock now. We're up to minute 20. Montreal team player, nine. Let's say uh, Ted Harris. Harris with the king. That's going to work. On to uh, nine. Ralph Backstrom. But too little, too late. So Backstrom has made this a 6-4 hockey game. So one could argue the scoring's a little high. Maybe I ought to advance four minutes with the diamond. I mean, I could still... You know, via a number of spades, I could still crawl my way to the end of a period. And really, that's what it is here is I want variable time. I just decided I wanted to try Doc with being able to speed up and slow down time and not always have the set eight number of sequences or a set number of sequences in a period. Anyway, so let me see here. Well, the zero minute, the zero minute and the jack. Okay, so let's give the puck to Jean Beliveau here for the Canadians. They got this pointer at some point intending to use it as such. And then never did, but it's a, it's an old Canada hockey pencil. Anyway, okay, so let's uh, let's get going with it here. So in the final final minute here, it is Bobby Russo, the Jack, I guess. With uh, who did I say before? Whoever I said before. Oh no 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 no. That's right. It's uh, Jean Belleva with it. Doesn't matter. Again, this is just playing around. But Beliveau with a three, so he shanks it anyway, and there time advances. So 6-4 is your final score after this one. So maybe it's been a little high, but it's also been more than a little fun. This is uh, my, my variant, as uh, suggested, a uh, time or three over in Delphi recently that I just wanted to try with the game Doc Hockey. And any trying out of any video like this, any time that you give this any consideration, it's uh, always appreciated, even if it's never expected. So... Hopefully uh, you're having a good weekend. Your weekend's off to a great start. Mine, given the time zones, is about half over. But cheers, thanks, and bye for now.